You could be fooled into thinking we're in China when you see the goods on sale in this shopping mall. But this is, in fact, Budapest. This centre, with hundreds of small Chinese stores, is the biggest of its kind in the whole of Europe. And it's based here, in this high-rise district of the Hungarian capital. Lucien Meyer owns a shop in Budapest's Asia Centre. She's a single mother with two daughters and is just about to start a 16-hour shift. Her youngest child, Zhang Zifang, goes to a Hungarian school. She started this year. Her Hungarian is good enough now, but most importantly, her Chinese is good enough now. Good enough that she can now devote herself entirely to learning Hungarian. The German-style cuckoo clock, made in China, tells them it's time to go. Mai's older daughter, Zhang Ziyang, is having more difficulties coping with the two languages. Like most other Chinese in Budapest, the 11-year-old attends a Hungarian Chinese school, which is just around the corner. More than 12,000 Chinese migrants live in Hungary. That's 4,000 more than just a decade ago. This school was set up in 2004. Discipline here is strict. Stand up are the first words of the Hungarian mathematics teacher. The members of the class are all present and correct. There are 19 pupils and no one is missing. This is all conducted in Hungarian, but you could imagine that a similar tone might prevail in Chinese schools. Hungarian head teacher Shuzana Edei gets on well with her Chinese counterpart. There are few disagreements and potential problems are cleverly avoided. The children are taught according to the Hungarian curriculum, though there are some specific subjects that are only taught in Chinese, such as art. In China, dissident artists challenge the political establishment. At this Chinese-funded school, Beijing retains control over such controversial subjects. Budapest is eager to profit from Chinese migrants. In 1991, Hungary abolished visa restrictions for people from China. They were later reintroduced, but conditions for traders were eased. Of course, Hungary's membership in the European Union was like a magnet to the Chinese. They use our country as a springboard to Western Europe. For the Chinese community, we're a bridge between East and West. That's exactly the way Mai sees things. She wants to make the leap to Western Europe from Budapest. She's discussing strategy with a fellow businesswoman and a friend. I'm trying to build up an internet shop so that I can sell goods in Western Europe too. Wedding dresses from China. This one costs over 500 euros. In European terms, that's cheap. And that's what counts here, the price. Tons of goods are imported here from China's economic powerhouse in Guangdong. I shop here because it's so colorful and cheap. I have more money left afterwards. I don't care where the shopkeepers come from. I'm most concerned about saving money. But not everyone in Hungary thinks the same way. The last election saw a rise in the anti-immigrant vote. But these two women are not concerned by that. They keep themselves to themselves. In the evening, Lucian Mai goes to her second store in the city centre. She explains how her bridal gown business works. She cuts out pictures from fashion magazines, sticks them to an order form and sends them off to China. The finished product is then shipped to Budapest. On her way home, she says she's not too worried if one day the business dries up. I like Hungary, but I can't take it seriously. Lucien says she can do business anywhere, and just like back home in China, she prefers to stay out of politics anyway.